But before we do this, we want to read some scriptures because we understand the people that are here. This is, again, a very prophetic moment. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for taking me. How you doing? Yes, coming your way with another, another beautiful video. Today is Monday, 2nd August. So I, I want to wish everybody a happy month in August. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm trying to challenge myself to, you know, upload a video every single day. Yes, but I have to make sure that video is relevant to your coming to Ghana, visiting Ghana, or learning about culture, the spiritual journey and all that. Yeah, so talking about spiritual journey, I want to say big shout out to Gilbert, Gilbert of the God Box Tours. Yes, so God Box Tours is a tour agency here in Ghana. Yes, they basically look at um, bringing tourists who want to have a spiritual connection with the motherland. So basically they are into, you know, the spiritual aspect of people, you know, trying to visit the motherland and all that, especially Ghana, Cape Coast. All right. So last week, uh, the God Box stores brought a quite a number of Hebrews to the motherland. Yes. And they visited Cape Coast for their, some of them visited Cape Coast for their first time. Others, I think one or twice, but this was a spiritual event. It was a spiritual journey for some of my brothers and sisters who came, you know, alongside God Box stores. So I'm going to show you exactly what took place when they came, went to the castle. It was spiritual for me as well, you know, you know, reading the scriptures and blowing that a horn or trumpet it's like a horn a trumpet thing and it was spiritual for all of us you know what i'm saying so hey let's go to the other scene and see what happened when god box stores brought our brothers and sisters from the diaspora peace Yeah, that's right. Uh, how you doing? Good, good. Now we're the last ones off. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This is the door of return. Inside is the door of no return. This is the reason why I said we should start here, because we're returning. And when you come for your you regular, it, when you come with, for your regular That's tour, good. which you're gonna have, I know it's late. Right. When you come for your regular tour, one of these days, um, during these uh, ten days, you're gonna come from the front. And then you're gonna they're gonna do the tour and all of that, but there's no real substance to that, in my opinion. We do this the right way. But before we do this, we want to read some scriptures because we understand the people that are here. This is again a very prophetic moment. We want to do this right, so we're gonna read some scriptures. Um, and then I'm gonna have our elder here blow the trumpet and announce to our ancestors that we're here. So once we finish reading the scriptures, there's some water right here. That's the ocean water. If anybody wants to wash their feet while you're here, you can do that. It's symbolic. Usually we would have people go into the water. Some people just go all the way in, all right? But this is all, you know, what you want to do. 
however you feel, whatever, how the spirit moves you, whatever you feel like doing. So we're bringing some, some ocean water over here. Um, and you can wash your feet. But I'm going to have Ron read the scriptures. You know, just to give us some perspective, again, uh, how far we've come, you know, and, why, and how we're here today. It's, in and of itself is a miracle. Go ahead. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remember Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there that for there they carried they that carried us away captive required us of a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, or O Yah, the children of Edom in that in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Yes. Amen. And what I love about that is that we didn't forget. That's why we're here. Exactly. Yeah. You didn't forget, and I think I think that's that's profound. Thomas Dalton, and his dad was named Frank Dalton. He lived in the 1850s in Virginia, and during those times, we were born into slavery. And if you ask your grandparents, they'll say that we were like cattle. So it was hard to trace our ancestry because we were considered like livestock. And so we all have English or European surnames that connect back to the slave masters that took us on the boats uh, to the Atlantic Ocean, to the, to the right Americas. Right and we have to understand that Ghana has the most slave forts in all of Africa. So a lot of times you'll see that the slaves were, were brought from Cameroon, Congo, Nigeria, and then they ended up south of Indy and to Egypt, again, with ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall redeem you. I think we're about to be redeemed today. Yeah. Yeah. This is the power that we have. So, you know, if, if I would love for you, again, if it's your face, if you just want to touch the water, if you want to wash your feet, you do that before we go in. Whatever you feel, whatever, however the spirit moves you. Yes, right there.
Gilbert. Yeah. Listen, my name is Gregory. My name is Gregory Hodge. I came here because my ancestors went out to a place that don't belong to them. Each one of us are here because one of our ancestors was strong enough to stay in here for three months under bad conditions. Not knowing where we were going and why we were in the position. But there was a reason for it because we were disobedient. We must understand who we are. We must understand who we are. They know who we are. We got power in us. You understand that? And we're back here because of a reason. There's a spirit here right now among us. And our people and our women who died looking for their children. Drowned, trying to figure out what was going on, not knowing. I just feel proud that I'm able to get back here. And all you guys who, who are here, your parents, your ancestors, were strong enough to be here for three months, travel through three months, being whipped, work under bad conditions in the field, picking cotton and all other kind of stuff, and being able to live through that and make it up north to, to whatever place you are, to put a seed into a woman. Yes. You understand? And to be developed and to have us come here. Yes. One of our ancestors came through that door. Yes. Believe that. Yes. Don't let nobody take that from you. We back. Yes, mm -hmm. we back. We back. Yeah. We back. Hallelujah. 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 My ancestor, my great 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 grandmother, she was born on a slave ship coming over in Virginia. She settled in Texas. That's where my family was from. I felt honored that they allowed me to blow the chauffeur to let our ancestors know that we was here. On your video? Yeah. Alright? Yeah. Okay. Right. It's all my family. My wife, Kathy. Wow, hello. That's my daughter, Brittany. She's shy. She think I'm too embarrassing her. <laughs> yes, Simone. That's my daughter-in-law and my, my son right there. He's a football player. I used oh. to be anyway. Right here. How are you doing, bro? Say hello. Hi. I see you, Alicia. <laughs> I see you, Alicia. Can I mention you? I didn't forget about her. <laughs> hey, we might be on YouTube. You know you're on YouTube. Oh, uh, well, yeah. We'd be famous. <laughs> It's an amazing experience. I, honestly, even on the way here, thinking about it, since however many years it's been, 400 plus, I'm the first from my line to return here. So it's a, it's an eye-opening experience, honestly. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. Today is um, one of the beautiful days in Ghana, Cape Coast, the castle right now. I have here with me the Bruce from the United States of America, right? Um, you've been here. You've gone through the passage. What is the experience, the whole experience like for you doing this? Well, it's it's sentimental because you know I know that my grandfather in West Virginia he used to always talk about our ancestry, and I said, how far back does our ancestry go? And he says it goes back to Virginia, to Roanoke, uh, Martinville. Uh, during the time of Virginia was all before Virginia got got divided into West Virginia and Virginia, and. You know, he, he knows, like a lot of our grandparents know that their grandparents were born into slavery, going back to the 1800s. So, and we have pictures, some of us have pictures in black and white of our grandparents, our great-grandparents. Uh, and when we do our DNA test, it comes back Akan, it comes back Ebo, it comes back Timne, it comes back Eve. So, this is sentimental because a lot of us, we've done our DNA test, we traced our lineage. Uh, many of us have traced our lineage back to Ghana, especially those that are from Jamaica, uh, in the Caribbean. And so, coming back the way that we left, not through the front door, but from the back door, signifies that we're breaking down chains, breaking down barriers, because the door was taught, basically the door is called the door of no return. And we know that that's not the case anymore because we're actually coming through that door. Deuteronomy 28, 68, in our Bible, 
um, when it says, I will bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, the Hebrew word for Egypt is Mitzrayim, but the root word, the root word is Metzar, Metzar, and Metzar means dire straits, affliction, oppression, hard times. And so we have to understand that in, in a lot of the Bantu words, that there's a, there's a root word, there's a, there's a prefix and a suffix, but the way that the Bantu languages are formed, uh, whether it's the Ketuba language, the Kikongo language, the Akan language, the Eve language, we understand that it functions just like Hebrew, because it is Hebrew, because the, the Bantu people are the Israelites. And so when we look at Deuteronomy 2868, it's telling of a, it's telling of a time that we're going to go into Egypt or a, a time of bondage, again, by way of ships. The Hebrew word for ships is Onia, Onia, O-N-I-Y-Y-Y-Y-A-H. And it says that, and nobody shall be able to redeem you, and you shall be sold as bondmen and bondwomen, as slaves. Nobody being able to redeem you means that, that the slave masters are not, nobody's going to come and purchase your 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 debt of being a slave. We stayed slaves and we were sold into the Americas. And so it's very really prophetic that in this time, we look at the year of return, we look at uh, the HR 1242, Donald Trump signed 400 years of African American oppression in Americas. We see that as prophetic. Uh, Genesis chapter 15, 13 talks about that Abraham's children or, or descendants will serve a nation for 400 years and they will be afflicted or oppressed but after 400 years they will come out of that nation and that nation shall be judged uh, and we're seeing a lot of things happening in the world today amidst, amidst the diaspora and trying to reconnect back to Africa from South America, from North America Central America, the Caribbean, the United Kingdom uh, and beyond so this is prophetic and uh, I can't wait for tomorrow we're going to be visiting Cape Coast Castle during the daytime in Omina Castle uh, get to see, the, hopefully get to touch the water uh, off the off the beach, and then soak all this in. Because for a lot of us, we, for a lot of black people, we struggle with identity. Uh, we struggle with identity, especially in America. We're more connected from Africa than, say, the people in the Caribbean. Yeah. But the people in the Caribbean, they still have some of the traditions, the customs, the food, the dances, even some of the languages. In Jamaica, it resembles the Akan languages, uh, like the Maroons and, and, and people that, that's there in, in Jamaica. But in terms of America, we're we're just completely disconnected from our heritage, our culture, our history, because we get we get taught our history from a European lens, a Western lens, and and with the Hebrew awakening, we're understanding our true identity, how it connects to the Bible, how everything is prophetic, because end times biblical prophecy has to surround the Israelites. When you read the Bible, it's in it's in the Bible, so you cannot look at end times biblical prophecy without looking at what's going on in the Israelites in in in, in terms of news. Uh, so. Everybody needs to pay attention to that because uh, when you look at Ezekiel 37, it talks about the dry bones. Malcolm X talked about the dry bones coming together. And if you know Ezekiel 37, it talks about the two sticks of the house of Israel and the house of Judah becoming one. And this after the dry bones, after the bones are given sinews and flesh, uh, and they got skin and they and they come up. Uh, so Ma Malcolm X knew about this very clearly. He knew we were the people of the book, like the Arabs. They called us the y Yehudi or Ibn Yakub or sons of Jacob. So. It's high time we wake up in the Americas, in the Caribbean, and reconnect to Africa. Because once once we reconnect with Africa, it's like the key and the lock that opens the door. And once we do that and start to unite with our brothers, have unity, respect, and love, then we can rise to the top. And that's what the, the Western nations don't want. They don't want us to come rise to the top. Because they've been, they've been oppressing us for a long time. And, and, and I'm happy we're here. Uh, beautiful. So you were talking about... Um, your grandparents showing you black and white pictures. Yes. And now you're having colored pictures. Yes. What word are you going to send out to your brothers and sisters who would wish to be like you in in, in Africa, mm -hmm. in Ghana right now? Well, they got to get here. My brother has been to Ghana for three times. I don't think he's been to Cape Coast Castle. Um, it's significant for me because a lot of a lot a lot of the pictures we have. Um, it's very hard to find, and sometimes we do keep a log of, of uh, our ancestors going back to the 1800s. But to actually come to Cape Coast Castle, where our ancestors left as slaves, uh, whether whether you um, trace your ancestry to the Igbo tribe, Yoruba tribe, we know that Ghana was like one of that disembarkation points where, where everybody had to get on the ship and then go. So that's powerful. Um, you know, if, if I when I get down to West Virginia, Virginia, I'm gonna tell my grandfather. <laughs> I actually visited the place where, I, uh, where, where your where your father and your grandfather was sold into slavery. All right, thank you.